My name is Derek Montia, occasionally known as a man who absolutely cannot watch this team in the ninth inning any longer. I'm joined by a man who's much more reasonable than I am. Of course, it's my vice mayor near Thunderstick, Jesse Friedman. Diamondbacks win a close game. The bullpen does their job. Corbin hits a dinger. And most importantly, Tori Lavolo finally gets career win number 500, which felt like it was never gonna come of course uh, uh, uh <laughs> ski to you all in the chat great to see all of you guys here right now uh and thunderbolts already t- losing his mind after a win come on pal we haven't had a lot of these so let's enjoy the ones we've had uh jesse what were your thoughts of course on uh this game and and kind of every the way everything went I mean, my first thought is I just want to make it clear that I made my T-shirt selection today before I knew what the Phoenix Suns were, were going to do, uh, what, what was going to transpire in the in the world of the Phoenix Suns tonight. I, I so, can't believe we had to watch that game while we were watching our game. It was it the was, most depressing. The, 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 yeah. the Phoenix sports vibe was not great in this office with what the Coyotes and the Suns were doing, but this your Diamondbacks, Diamondbacks held game, it down. Yeah, this Diamondbacks game was was a, a little shaky. It wasn't necessarily the most like emphatic win that you might have hoped for, but compared to what we saw uh, on TV with the Coyotes and the Suns, uh, uh, it was big, big, yeah, big advantage Diamondbacks. We did the thing. We did the thing, and they did the thing, and of course, yeah. they got the thing started off with Corbin Car- Carroll's first career leadoff home run and his first home run of the season we have said that Carroll looked like he was making progress uh, his at bats were getting him better and better even though the results weren't there uh, of course there were some people that mocked that idea but that's also the reason why as much as I mock Jesse and his advanced stats they tend to prove to be kind of right sometimes so <laughs> well, anyway they do tell the story and of course so far it looks like Carroll has kind of gotten things a little bit more back on track better night tonight uh, and of course, that uh, those early uh, early runs ha- continue to give the Diamondbacks the lead, and and at least for this game, they were actually able to hold the lead instead of letting it slip away late. Yeah, I mean, this game, uh, the the narrative today was very similar to the narrative of some of these games that have ended in devastating defeat for the Diamondbacks, right? You get mm-hmm. up early, the the two runs in the first inning, like, boy, have we seen that a few times this year, right? Corbin Carroll uh, with the home run, Diamondbacks score again later in that frame, get up to nothing. And then as we've seen, uh, they did get another run in the second inning, but as we've seen, they went silent they did not score a single run for the rest of the game Cal Quantrill who's really had a rough go of things to start off the season with the Rockies he settled in he finished with a quality start six innings three runs could not believe that could not believe the Diamondbacks had they had some opportunities they did have some base runners they they drew some walks uh against the Rockies relievers but they just couldn't get a big hit like the Diamondbacks just could not for the life of them get a big hit to create some separation but unlike these last few days the bullpen actually did do its part today um and and did did really well right I mean three scoreless innings I know the Rockies offense isn't good but in that ballpark you always feel good about three scoreless innings uh and and the diamondbacks had they had their main guys today the guys that they probably wanted to go to were available ryan thompson uh came in got in you know uh, wound up getting four outs kyle nelson got a couple of outs and then kevin ginkle was able to able to finish things off in the ninth inning thank you to yoshi who wants to just use this as an opportunity to rub in his uh jace peterson agenda he says snakes are one and oh when jace starts and finishes (laughs) And then he has a thinking emoji. Makes you think. It makes you really think. I, I uh, like how Yoshi was like ironically a Paven Smith guy. And then yeah. and then one day he was he's, just like, I we I am ironically a Jace, now a Jace Peterson. Well, guy. not ironically. He is a no, Jace Peterson truther. It's ironically. He is a truther. He is a truther. And uh, honestly, with the way that Blaze Alexander has looked in the field, um, it kind of makes you believe in in Jace Peterson a little bit. Uh is he the worst defender in baseball, Jesse? Is Blaze Alexander 
the worst defender in baseball. I, I thought you'd I thought you'd dwell on the positives of this game a little bit more before we had that conversation. I mean, but uh, <laughs> he brought it out in me. But I mean, yeah, if, if, we'll, we'll we'll have we have plenty of positives still to talk about. Um, but yeah, there was again the the thing the Diamondbacks hung their hat on all last season was defense, and obviously we've seen yeah. a lot of mistakes made this season uh blaze wasn't the only one it wasn't a great day for gino out there in the field and that's kind of been his calling card it wasn't a great day for him at the plate either i made a brand new meme i was excited to use it never got to use it not one time uh but blaze alexander again not just i mean i again as president of the blaze alexander fan club i don't know what to say other than this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. I yeah. mean, it's rough for him. And one thing Damon said during the game was you obviously want, you know, him to learn from this and get better. The unfortunate side of it is, you know, it, it is quite possibly costing this team games and, and almost did again today. Blaze Alexander entered today with minus four outs above average, which is which is very, very poor given that Blaze Alexander's only played you know, a handful of games at this point defensively. He's DH some, you know, Geraldo Perdomo before he got hurt, obviously, was was really getting the majority of the reps out there. Um, so for him to be at minus four already is pretty alarming. He probably uh, moved to minus five today, given that there was a pretty routine pop fly that he was not able to make a play on. That didn't actually factor into this game, though. And that was another difference between this game and some of the recent games is the Diamondbacks did make some mistakes, right? You mentioned Gino Suarez, not necessarily easy plays, but plays that you'd maybe like to see him make uh, that he was not able to. And then Blaze with that pop up, uh, not able to make that play either. Uh, you know, it wasn't great, but the Diamondbacks were able to actually win this game anyway. So a lot of positives, though, and a big part of the positives today was Gabby Moreno, who struggled offensively, having a big day going four for five. Uh, like Jesse said, uh, the big thing here with the Diamondbacks offense today was just not getting those timely hits. And that carried over for Moreno, who was able to get some huge hits, just not in the one opportunity when he had a runner on in scoring yeah. position. So Diamondbacks yeah. went one for seven uh, with runners in scoring position, but don't run on Gabby. Do not run on Gabby. And I like, he tried to warn you with that video that we played during the off season where he said like, he, like he basically, he understands the concept of you wanting to win, wanting to steal the base, but he just, he can't let you, he just can't let you. Yeah, Gabby Moreno, a really big game all the way, all the way around for him. I know, as you said, the one spot where he didn't come through was with a hit was probably when the Diamondbacks needed to hit the most. Uh, but still, I mean, a four hit day, that's that's always that's always a good thing. And that was something he really needed. Right. I mean, we've talked about both Corbin Carroll and Gabby Moreno just not getting out of the gate, especially well. Neither of them really struck out at all. It was just that they they weren't really making any kind of compelling contact within the first 10 games or so of the season. And today, I mean, they played a pretty prominent role. No Cattell Marte, no Lourdes Gurriel. I mean, that's basically your, your primary leadoff guy, your primary number three hitter through the first uh, 11 games of the season. Tori Lovello gave both of those guys a day off, and that put Corbin in the, in the leadoff spot and Gabby Moreno in the two-hole. And they delivered today. They were able to uh, give the Diamondbacks just enough uh, in order to win this game with Gabby, the four hits, the, the run scored, and then Corbin Carroll, of course, with that home run to start the game off. Shout out to Craig Morgan for his super chat. And not Craig just for is his a troublemaker. super chat, but Craig Morgan is an absolute <laughs> troublemaker uh, who, I mean, from early on in this game, Craig's confidence level in the Diamondbacks winning through the roof. This was his question. Unjustified. Here. Here's Craig Morgan's question. Jesse and Derek, is this the best bullpen in D-backs history? You son of a bitch, Craig. How <laughs> Yeah, let's get into the you. more negatives from tonight. No, Craig Morgan. No, we're not because the bullpen was good tonight. The bullpen was good tonight. The, do you feel like do you feel like Craig's question was asked in good faith? Derek? No, absolutely like, not. What did you he call right them? Maybe said. he just he wants to know, you know. He's I mean, Craig, Craig with the Coyote situation, like Craig doesn't have time to watch baseball, right? Like maybe he does. Maybe well, if and he his just barometer, watched tonight's game, maybe he really does think that correct. this Diamondbacks bullpen has no, just been dynamite point. the entire season. It's not season. just that he hasn't been watching the team. It's the fact that his barometer for what a good team is is completely broken at this oh, point. I believe fair. he used yeah, the, the term money when describing this bullpen. I think he said this bullpen is money. True. I heard that out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't tell you. There's crazy things going There's yelling going on out there. I hope it's unrelated. I hope it's good. But... 
uh, in the meantime, we do have more super chat questions I did want to answer before we moved on. Uh, thank you, Benjamin Hunley. He said, is it physically possible for Jake McCarthy to have had a worse at bat in the eighth inning? No, it is not. No, it was not. It was a pretty bad at bat. Though Jake McCarthy has been having some better at bats this season. He has, a, he has looked much better than he did even in spring training. Uh, but at times, that's what you're going to get out of Jake, unfortunately. Yeah, Jake, uh, I mean, I guess all four pitches in that at-bat were out of the strike zone. Yeah. So it's never it's never great when, when that happens and you wind up getting out anyway. Uh, yeah, it was a 2-0 count. He swings at a fastball well below the zone and misses. That's something that is never really a good sign. And then he, he winds up rolling over the top on a fastball outside. So, yeah, it wasn't a great at-bat. And, I mean, frankly, in any, like, big late-game situation – the Diamondbacks at bats across the board have just not been particularly good, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've still scored a decent amount of runs this year. I wrote in my newsletter that they are averaging six runs a game, that if they maintained this run scoring pace for the entire 2024 season, they would wind up with nearly a 1,000 runs scored, which is something that no team did last year. So, like, in some sense, this Diamondbacks offense has actually been fairly productive. It's just been really uneven, just really inconsistent, right? So many runs being scored at the beginning of games. Obviously, they stacked so many runs in the first two games of the season against the Rockies. Since then, it's been a it's been a bit of a different story. And that's something you're still waiting on. The Diamondbacks didn't get that big hit in this game, right? The offense, this was not the offensive breakout that you were maybe hoping uh, hoping to see from them. Maybe that's something that comes tomorrow if the Diamondbacks can, you know, really get back to a place where they're clicking on all cylinders. All right, we had another super chat, by the way, uh, Damon. I think it was from our guy Corbin Barrels. Uh, Corbin Barrels said, "What is the name to the new intro song?" This is we, like the Krabby the Krabby Patty secret formula. Like we this can't is, tell them. We have to. This is locked no. in a vault, brother. I mean, <laughs> I've heard it was called La Balada de Jesse Friedman, but yeah. I don't know <laughs> I for su- sure. I support that. Yes. Um, <laughs> I definitely. I, I mean, I, I I've said it to my uh, my ringtone on my phone. To be honest, it absolutely uh, is that, and uh, uh, it's a fire song. I don't know what to tell you. It absolutely spoke to us when we when we came across it. We knew exactly what we needed to do, uh, and that was forever. There's no, there's never going to be another theme song. Basically, that's it until the end of time. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we kept our previous theme song for more than two years, and none of us even really liked that one. <laughs> nah. So, so this one's um, going to have like at least a decade long tenure, as far as I'm concerned. I think Sean liked that one. He liked the old one. Oh, Sean I mean, I guess it wasn't. Loved it wasn't terrible. One. Yeah, and he liked to do the drums yeah, and whatnot. He did. I don't, do you guys remember that? Yeah. yeah, he would he get it really into it. Yeah, he really did. Um, but Sean would love the job the bullpen did, especially his guy T time Ryan Thompson, who continues to be a lockdown reliever for this team. Uh, and again. Uh, one of my favorite wrestling fans of the whole wide world. Again, I cannot <laughs> wait to discuss with him uh, what exactly happened at WrestleMania, but uh, I won't talk to him about the fact that he hasn't given up a run yet this season because I feel like that would be a bad idea to say Seems those like a words bad idea. to yeah. his face. Uh, but man, this guy has been an incredible reliever, so much so that Tori decided to go uh, to him for the, for the four-out uh, appearance, which we rarely see out of a guy like Ryan Thompson. Uh, it shows that Tori has really limited options when it comes to the bullpen. And there are three guys right now he trusted and he's that he trusts. And you saw all three of those guys tonight. Ryan Thompson has been the Diamondbacks best reliever this season. No, no question about it. Right. Uh, and Kevin Ginkle has been all right. He hasn't really had all that many opportunities. The backs haven't necessarily had a whole lot of uh, leads for him to protect, but uh, Ryan Thompson, at least they've had plenty of leads to protect, just not leads in the ninth inning. Right. Uh, but Ryan Thompson, six innings this year, three hits, no runs, uh, no walks, three strikeouts. Well, I mean, last season after the Diamondbacks acquired Ryan Thompson, it was it was one run in 13 innings. So he's just been he's just been incredibly good since coming over to this team and a really, really important part of this bullpen uh, that has struggled quite a bit. What, Craig, what is, what is Craig doing? Craig Morgan's now? here and he's this on the phone. What's going on, Craig? What, can we help you, Craig? Oh, oh, Craig's playing with my phone. That's a bad person to leave. We just talked about him being a troublemaker, a notorious troublemaker. Yeah, so I think Craig is a, big time that's, in that's his troublemaking era tonight. That's a bad person to leave your phone All right, with. Craig, who did you text? Sorry, did I, did 
Do you, you send do you send pictures? Of- <laughs> <laughs> no, but we did answer your question about the bullpen, and uh, Jesse, thanks again. You're just causing trouble. Is that a hard no? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, it's 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 not, not it. it's not a yes. It's not a yes. Craig. They did we'll their job so, tonight. They way. did their job tonight, and maybe it was because of Craig Morgan, or maybe it's because of Tori Lavello again. Once again, just decided to go to tea time. Uh, Ryan Nelson and uh, you know Kevin Ginkle there to close close it out. Yeah, and I, I did think Kyle it was Nelson, yeah, Kyle, Kyle Nelson. Nelson. I, Kyle I Nelson did think Ryan it was interesting that Tory went to Kyle Nelson because, I mean, he had Ryan Thompson get uh, Tovar, right? Thompson pitched the seventh, came back out, pitched to Tovar to, to start the eighth inning, and then he brings in Kyle Nelson to face Ryan McMahon, knowing that the two hitters coming after Ryan McMahon were right-handed hitters, and you're not necessarily... I told you. It's, it's what are, my, what are it's you my, doing, it, Derek? I'm, it's my it's my ringtone. Damon's calling me. Oh my sorry, gosh! Sorry. Oh All right, sorry. Gosh. I just needed to prove that it was in fact my ringtone. Go ahead, do your thing. I didn't All mean right, to interrupt point you taken. All right. Uh, so so Ryan Thompson uh, gets the first out of the eighth inning, and then and then Tori went to Kyle Nelson uh, for for the rest of the eighth inning in order to get uh, he faced McMahon, he faced Diaz, and then Chris Bryant uh, did give up a hit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that was kind of a statement from Tori Lovello that yep. he trusted Kyle Nelson more than he trusted any of the right-handed relievers in this bullpen. Yeah. Part of it could be a workload thing. I know some of those other guys have, have, you know, seen fairly heavy usage maybe in the last few days as well. But, I mean, Kyle Nelson has pitched pretty well this year. Like, he hasn't yep. given up a run uh, himself either. And granted, he hasn't been pitching in the biggest moments of games, but that might be something we start to see in the coming days, even if the matchups don't necessarily make a strong case that Kyle Nelson is the guy, like, with what you've seen from Castro and Luis Frias and Scott McGuff. Yeah. Uh, Nelson might might kind of join that back-end reliever group for a while, at least until Paul Seawald comes back. Uh, neither of those guys have given up an earned run. Uh, including Kyle Nelson there. Yeah. Uh, and Kevin Ginkle looked very good there in the ninth. I think he's finally kind of adjusted to that role. And again, I think maybe the idea that they came in with a game plan on who would get seven, eight, nine, uh, you know, maybe that is a reason why he was a bit more comfortable tonight. I know that in the past, that's something that they've expressed was uh, it, it meant something to them to know coming into a game when you were going to be utilized, what your role specifically was going to be. But those guys were great in a close game, a game that probably shouldn't have been as close as it was. Uh, no, don't know what happened to the offense at Coors Field. I thought I was told yeah. that there was supposed to be a lot of offense, but uh, the pitching <laughs> was pretty good. Merrill Kelly, again, uh, he 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 walked uh, walked a fine line, but uh, was was good for this team. I mean, it's funny when you can look at a Merrill Kelly outing of going six innings, giving up six hits, two earned runs, three walks, and four strikeouts, and say, eh, it was all right. Yeah, yeah, this wasn't this wasn't Merrill Kelly's finest game by any means, and and you're absolutely right that we we probably take uh, him for granted a little bit. And, and I mean, six innings, two runs in that ballpark is still pretty impressive, but he, his command was just off today. I mean, you saw him issue several walks that were pretty uncharacteristic. Uh, his zone rate in this game was 36%, meaning that only 36% of his pitches were actually in the strike zone. Uh, and I, in particular, look at his, his fastball, his four seamer, that number was just 31 31 percent and i mean if merrill kelly is throwing a four seam fastball he pretty much is always trying to throw a strike and he wasn't really able to do that in this game there were a lot of arm side misses uh so i'm sure he's going to be somewhat frustrated you know i mean it was a 27 pitch sixth inning i think he probably would have liked to be able to go back out and pitch the seventh um but the diamondbacks were were able to, to pull this one out anyway and it was in no small part because merrill kelly hung in there and uh, still managed to, to pitch pretty well. Uh, Piece of Yoshi wants to know, why do Steve and Bob keep calling Kyle Nelson Kevin Nelson? I think that's age might be a factor there. That That's the reason that, why. That, seem, that seems a little mean. Is it? I right. personally haven't noticed that. But to be fair, we don't generally listen with like the audio turned up all that especially loud. Especially tonight, when there's with the Suns game. When there's like 17 yeah. Arizona sports games happening at once. I, I'll, I'll um, also say, though, just in defense of me calling them old, uh, they, they tend to make a mistake and then kind of laugh about it and then make an inside joke of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's something they do frequently that that's more the reason why, because they think it's hilarious and we find it confusing. And sometimes when you're calling 162 baseball games, you have to do things that amuse yourself and nobody else. So, sure. Uh, shout out to Nate Cleveland, by the way. Uh, Nate Cleveland did an excellent job tonight uh, representing 
Diamondbacks fans out there in Colorado. Uh, he said he almost caught Corbin's home run ball. That would have been awesome. Wow. Um, but of course, he said both uh, Corbin and Grichik's home runs went to the same guy 30 rows away from him oh, or 30 seats away wow. from him. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. Do you think um, the you think the Rockies like surrounded him with security guards to try to to try to get the <laughs> get the baseballs back? <laughs> I, don't. I don't think the Rockies are a criminal organization, Jesse. Yeah, that's if that's true. what you're asking that's me. True. Dodgers need every penny they can get, that's for sure. But uh, the Diamondbacks did give Cattell and Lourdes the day off. No big surprise there, obviously, just due to yeah. the frequency. But then Cattell still ends up getting an, an at-bat there late in the game. Um, but, of course, the Diamondbacks were where they were tonight, and in, in part, a big, big part to Gabrielle Moreno, who is our king stake tonight. Gabby went four for five at the plate. He had uh, two singles, two doubles, uh, and he caught two people trying to steal bases, of course, like we said, I mean, you can try, you can try all you want, but <laughs> don't run on Gabby. Yeah, and and the second of those, wow, I mean, who knows what happens with with the first of those? Uh, it was runner at first, two out. Brenton Doyle tries to steal second base. Gabby catches him. You know, if he's safe there, you've got a runner at second, two out. Who knows what happens? You know, maybe the Rockies do score a run there. Uh, but the next inning, if you if you just play out that inning, Merrill Kelly was called for a balk, of course, by the legendary angel hernandez himself and uh if you play out that inning with gabby not successfully catching the runner at second base the the rockies wind up tying the game so that was not just a caught ceiling that was sort of empty calories and a nice stat patter for gabby moreno that was potentially a game-saving play for the diamondbacks with the way that the rest of that inning played out so he's so good back there man um i just I mean, you you know that you know the skill set, like you know, you know how good he is at it. But somehow, every single time he does it, it still just sort of catches me off guard, and I'm and I marvel afresh at just like how how smooth the process is and how amazingly on target his throws pretty much always are. Uh, so yeah, Gabby with four hits and two two big defensive plays, undoubtedly the king snake for us today. Jesse, yes or no? Gabby's arm mar. You marvel at it more because you have to watch our outfield. True or false? <laughs> like now all arms are, that, just, are just times 100 way more impressive. At that's, this point. that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Diamondbacks outfield, not uh, not necessarily known for their outfield arms. Uh, although I will say that Randall Grishik, even we were talking about this when we were watching yesterday's game, like Grishik's arm is like kind of sneaky, like a little above average. <laughs> And even that in itself is like, oh, my gosh, the guy's got a cannon. So, yeah. yes, that probably does mess with all of us a little bit. Jesse but and I were watching in the office and like he threw like one ball into second base and we were like, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> Randall Grichik, man. What it, wasn't, a throw. it wasn't even an out, right? No, it, was, it wasn't. It was it just, just like a kind of a routine It was kind play. of close. It was kind of close. And we were like, man, on target and not the weakest throw you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to blow your mind with another stat here because we think Gabby is we we just think watching Gabby he's good and this team is blessed to have him. The Diamondbacks have allowed one stolen base this season and that leads Major League Baseball. Really? The Diamondbacks oh, uh, there are two uh three teams tied with two stolen bases allowed San Diego Dodgers and KC but the Diamondbacks have only allowed one stolen base. Um, and that's because of Gabby Moreno. There's so much value there. I mean, with with baseball being what it is now uh, in this era with the, the rule changes and teams being more active on the bases than they have in the past, it just makes Gabby Moreno that much more valuable. I mean, in yeah. an era where teams are running not more than they ever have, but more than they've run in a long time, having a guy like Gabby behind the plate is is so valuable and absolutely saw that in this game. Well, of course, we thank you guys all for being here right now on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel for a winning episode, a winning post-game episode. Uh, this guy had to pull, uh, point out to me we haven't done this for a week, uh, and that hurt my soul deep down inside. Of course, it was uh, a, it was a week ago today. The Diamondbacks won their uh, oh. their fourth game, win so, so, they'll, so they'll win their sixth game a week from Shut today. Shut up, right? Jesse how... Friedman. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't listen to him. Listen to me. I'm the encouraging voice here. Uh, we thank you guys for being here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so now. We implore you to sign up for notifications that we don't miss when any of our shows go live because sometimes we do emergency podcasts and we run around and yell and scream and have to do it, put it together in a hurry. You don't want to miss those. Of course, uh, drop us a like. 
Gabby deserves a like. So if you're here, uh, don't drop a like for us. What we Dr- said last drop time, a we like said, for Gabby. hit the like button to make Gabby better at baseball. It worked. And what and happened? It worked. Science. It's science. It, it is absolutely science. is yeah. science. It's proven science. Uh, of course, if you're listening on the audio podcasting side, make sure you're subscribed over there. Uh, even if you don't listen to them, do it anyway. Why not? Leave us a review. We appreciate that. Those five star reviews uh, are absolutely outstanding. But also, also listen to it. You you can watch it live and then catch the recap, and that's when you can really dig into Jesse's stats and all the nerd stuff he's saying is in that form. But of course, we thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, check out our friends at BetMGM Sportsbook. They does make baseball better. Uh, I'm not very good at this. I actively chose Corbin Carroll to go negative or, or, or under a half a home run for this game as part of my parlay. I actually did that. So you can thank You're me. You're so bad for, at I'm parlays. I'm really bad Derek. at parlays. Yeah. Like it broke within, what was that? Like the maybe, very first, maybe like 90 of the game? seconds yeah. of the game yeah. starting. Yeah, Probably not even. That's on my parlay. It sucks. But of course, uh, that's the sacrifices I make to get Corbin Carroll out of a slump. So uh, like I said, use it for how you want to use it. But, a really good reverse jinx better. I am a really good reverse, good reverse I am, jinx. I better. actually am. That's that's the truth. But uh, you could be too. Download the sportsbook app. Maybe you're not that. Maybe you actually make your bets work in your favor. But uh, of course, right now, if you sign up and deposit at least ten dollars into your Bet MGM sportsbook account, sign up using our code of PHNX, you will get whatever amount you bet up to fifteen hundred dollars back back in bonus bets. Should your first bet lose, uh, if your bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. So sign up right now for Bet MGM and use that bonus code of PHNX. Place your first Bet MGM Sportsbook wager through the MBM, Bet MGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least ten dollars. You will receive fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details, and now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Available in the U.S. Call eight seven seven eight Hope and Y four six seven three six nine New York. Call one 327 Massachusetts. Twenty one plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call one eight hundred Next Step Arizona. One eight hundred Bets Off Iowa. One 800 Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See betmgm.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Uh, of course, check out our friends at Gila River Resorts and Casinos, which, of course, that would be a great move for us tonight because this studio is packed and all of these people are miserable doing their miserable shows. We are happy. We're in a good mood and we want to celebrate in a great Craig place. Craig tried to put his stink on us. I know. I didn't like our our TV being on next to the Suns TV with what was going on in that first quarter. But OK, before, but 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 update, but, Derek. Let's go. The Suns are down by 10. How in what universe? Don't call it a comeback. What universe is this happening? I I need to get out there and watch this game. Again, a good place to celebrate, especially when your team comes back. Gila River Resorts and Casinos, they offer an authentic and immersive experience with an unprecedented level of entertainment and excitement that you just won't find anywhere else. Check out their gaming floor with over 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, live table games, and so much more including Arizona's largest casino sports book. So you do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. Make a reservation. Get yourself a room. Have a staycation. Enjoy yourself. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers from this game uh, because they tell kind of interesting story here. The Diamondbacks uh, barely won this game, and, and based on these numbers, you can see how. Uh, very interesting here that two home runs were all that was hit in uh, once again a Coors Field uh, game, but uh, I, I'm guessing it was a little cold there tonight. I don't know what yeah, was going on. Yeah, I think on. it was. I think it was warmer than yesterday by like five degrees or something. But still, the still a chillier time of year out in Denver, Colorado, for sure. The Diamondbacks struck out more here than the Rockies. Eight strikeouts for Diamondbacks batters to six for Rockies. Runners in scoring position. Both teams were pretty bad. Yeah, uh, one for six, one for seven. Not a lot of opportunities and not a lot of conversions. Uh, and the Diamondbacks barely out hit the Rockies there nine to eight. Obviously, the two home runs there being the big, the big, the big key here that the Diamondbacks were able to keep uh, the Rockies, you know, bats kind of off the off the board there, and were able to get some big flies themselves. Yeah, and I want to shout out Merrill Kelly again for I believe this was in the this was in the first inning. Uh, Charlie Blackman with a single. Ezekiel Tovar followed that up with a double. So first two batters reach against Merrill Kelly. This is right after the Diamondbacks had taken a 2 nothing lead. So you kind of figured, all right, here we go again. The Diamondbacks are just going to give those runs right back. And they did get one run back on a Ryan McMahon ground out. But with a runner at third and one out, Merrill Kelly dialed up a strikeout to Elias Diaz and then got Chris Bryant 
the ground out to end that inning. So that was that was also really big. I mean, yeah. as a runner at third one yeah. out, if the Rockies get that get that guy in, that also could be the difference in us doing this post game show now or you know still still watching this baseball game uh, go on so this guy kept tempting fate when it came to talking about how much time it was going to take <laughs> and how this game was really moving along and it Jinxes was are not a real thing Derek. yeah i know i try to convince to, people of that society, every we just single have day to recognize that we really do point. yeah the things we say on shows or in life or on uh twitter for instance do not actually impact baseball games i know that's hard to hear because something bad goes wrong and you need to pin it on somebody and I get that. I want to pin everything bad that happens on Saul Bookman. That's the way that it works around here. And honestly, the paper trail usually can lead back to him really being at fault for a lot of things. But uh, I really do, as the as a thumbs down comes on, and it's probably presumably Saul watching this right now. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I do want to say that uh, you know there there is uh, there's something to be said right now about this team barely winning these team these games and and yeah. this game I understand with the loss yesterday that people are very frustrated with this team right now uh and and it doesn't really feel like you want to be very excited about this win considering how close it was to them once again blowing it late but you got to accentuate the positives and for right now uh, much like the team themselves you got to build on what you know on on the good things here and that was that this bullpen was excellent tonight and held like they needed to uh, in a very, yeah. very close game, uh, in a ballpark where offense can kind of go bonkers at any point. So I think hats off to all the pitchers tonight for doing their job and keeping this a close game. And honestly, again, the Diamondbacks just needed to get get that losing streak snapped because things were starting yeah. to look pretty bad for this team. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't, uh, like I said from the top, it was not an emphatic Diamondbacks win uh, this is still still the vibes are very different from when the Diamondbacks faced the Rockies to start the year and they just looked like the vastly superior team and the results bared that out. The Diamondbacks didn't look like a much better team than the Rockies today. Uh, but at the same time, a win is a win. And that and over the course of 162, I mean, that really is all that matters some days. Yeah. You chalk up a win, uh, it's something the Diamondbacks sorely needed, given how the last week has gone for them. So. Maybe this is the start of something. Maybe this is the start of them them kind of turning things around and, and getting on a nice run of their own. Well, we've said it before, and we will say it again. The numbers don't lie. Damon, let's take a look at tonight's number uh, because it's a big one for our manager. Uh, tonight's number, number 500. 500 career victories for Tori Lavallo as a manager. Uh, I believe all of those have come in his tenure uh, under the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, it's a little it's a little strange. I mean, I think technically Tori Lovello has more than 500 wins as a manager because he stepped in for John Farrell uh, out in Boston. And and presumably, I believe the Red Sox won some games under Tori Lovello's tenure there. <laughs> uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me. But yeah, with with the Diamondbacks as the official manager of a team, not like an interim role stepping in for someone. Uh, he did reach number 500 today, and he is by a pretty wide margin the winningest manager in Diamondbacks history. Yes. That's a, a title that he has held for a while uh, I mean, this is his eighth season as manager of the Diamondbacks. So he's he's been around for a while and there have been some ups and some downs for sure. But, uh, you know, especially in the last week, I know people are maybe not super happy with some of the decisions that he made. But Tori Lovello still among the most accomplished managers in, in this franchise's history, for sure. And more importantly, it's a, it's funny how th how quickly things change where, you know, the Diamondbacks do run into some struggles early and. We are already getting people calling for, you know, Tori to be fired, which is just crazy, right? Like, yeah, I, I understand there's some frustration here. And honestly, in the organization, there's probably a lot of frustration. This team did spend a lot of money on guys who aren't here right now. Uh, and they did put their faith in guys that aren't, uh, aren't aren't healthy right now. It's not anybody's fault, but there is a big impact here by the loss of the players that they've lost. You know, you, you can kind of see it there with Alec Thomas being gone and how, at times, the outfield isn't as sharp as we've come to see it. The infield obviously misses Geraldo Perdomo. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but more importantly, the guys that they really spent a lot of money on for the starting rotation haven't even pitched one inning uh, at, at a major league level yet. So yeah. I, I think there does need to be some patience here with this team and and the fact that they are kind of you know experiencing these, these struggles that they're experiencing right now because it's not 
really the full team. You know, you could say no. that you could say that they absolutely, you know, went out and spent money and it's kind of been a failure right now, but that's mostly because uh, you know, Randall Gritchick just got here. A lot of the money that they've spent actually hasn't hit the field. And and honestly, we talked about it the other day, but like Gino and 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 Jock have actually been pretty good so far. So it's not like the guys that are playing uh have haven't really worked out. It's it's just situationally this uh this team experienced a lot of loss all at once. Hopefully, you know, it bonds them. Hopefully they kind of come together through this period of time where where things aren't good for them and, and it makes them even closer. Uh, connects them even it further. Makes them a little bit more dangerous. Makes maybe. them a little more fucking dangerous. A little more connected. A little, a little more, more dangerous. dangerous. Heard there's a correlation. There is those. a correlation yeah. between those two things. There's science. a formula. It's like FIP, but it's actually more scientific than. This FIP. is the most scientific <laughs> podcast at PHNX. Actually, that's correct. There's that's been a correct. couple of science moments. We do. We do. We yeah. do. We, we talked about the eclipse yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we're very sciencey around here for sure. Um, I'm I'm not even answering your questions anymore, Thunderbolt, because you've lost your mind already, and it's a young season. And honestly, <laughs> uh, you're a great example of people that should calm down when it's 162 games. Uh, they are not bush league. Uh, they're you don't. Just, you just don't. You don't miss the playoffs because of a, a five game losing streak in April, right? right? Yeah. Uh, not. Not in and of itself the diamondbacks and i and i wrote this in my newsletter before the game started it, it had only been 11 games coming in right four and seven was not the start the people envisioned for this team especially given all the success they had last year but yeah as you talked about there's so many so many valuable players so many frontline players on the injured list right now jordan montgomery of course is yet to throw a pitch for this baseball team and the diamondbacks had, had done i know people don't want to hear this but even in, in that 11-game stretch entering today, the Diamondbacks did some things pretty well. Like Their run scoring was among the best in the majors. They outscored their opponent uh, by 14 runs entering today. I guess they're now plus 15. So I, I, still, I still am hesitant to put much of anything on a sample that is this small. April 19th, April 20th, 420, big day for me. Uh, might be a big day for the Diamondbacks because that could be when Jordan Montgomery makes his debut or on the 19th around then. Um, but that's when the reinforcements really do start coming. And I, I think that right now this team is stretched thin uh, and things might change a lot for this team once that starting rotation is complete, once Erod's healthy, and once Torrey has the ability to decide on which of these other arms he can count on potentially out of the bullpen like Ryan Nelson or Tommy Henry, uh, you know, that right now the, the bullpen can kind of change a bit there. And then obviously we know that off in the distance we'll have Paul Seawald returning hopefully the next four to six weeks. Yeah, I mean, I think if you go out six weeks, you can talk yourself into like all of these guys being back at that point. Because uh, Perdomo, we heard four to six weeks. Alec Thomas, I would think, would be a, a touch less than that. I guess Jordan Lawler is the one guy that you might not see back. It seems a little unlikely he would be back that soon. But, of course, he's probably going to go back to Reno when he's when he's healthy again. So, yeah, it's a lot of injuries all at once. And you get those guys back, this team suddenly looks a whole lot different than you know it what? does right now. You know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to do it. Uh -oh. uh, if the Diamondbacks end up with a winning record in April, I'll dye my hair purple with a little green no, streak. No, you... Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy you yeah. did it again. Yeah, I'll no, fucking do I it. Love it. Wow. I'll do it. I love it so because much. I think it's impossible at this point. They have a tough schedule ahead. So prove me wrong. Do it. I'll dye my hair purple again. I'll fuck it. Look, I got an adult haircut today. I was just telling him. I went and like she was like, it's time. It's time, you know, for you to like kind of be a, be a grown up. And I was like, ah, oh, I can't do the one on the side with the hard part. She's like, no, those are that's that's a haircut for 8-year-olds. And so <laughs> I got like a little fade action going on the sides. I fucking hate it. So I'm going to tell you, I'll dye this hair purple with the stupid green streak that he has that I don't really like. Pick a direction. If they're, if they're over 500 in April. If they're over 500 in okay. April. Okay. All right. Let me uh You want to clip it? You just, oh, just we're, clip it now. We're absolutely going to clip, it now. clip that oh, for man. sure. We're going to hold you to that just oh, like we did nah. last time. Um, so the Diamondbacks, the the rest of this month. So right now they're they're obviously they're five and seven. So you've got another game against the Rockies. You've got three against the Cardinals this weekend. Three against the Cubs. Those are all at home. Then they go on the road at Giants for four, at Cardinals for three, at Mariners for three, and then they finish off the month with two at home against the Dodgers. So that is, if I can count here real quick, 
That is 19 games left in the month. I dare you. I fucking dare you to make my hair, to turn my hair purple. I fucking so dare you. So they would you. have to be 16 and 15 yeah. for Derek to dye his hair purple, uh, which means they have to go, if I can do math, they have to go uh, 11 and 8 the rest of the way. Share that clip in the clubhouse. Pass that one. I don't around. think I did that right. Let everybody see that. Yeah, show the one of you fighting for the boys. Because, you know. What, when it mattered most. Yeah. Who was there fighting yeah. for the boys? Yeah. Derek Montilla, That's the right. goddamn mayor. The mayor, according to Heidi Watney. Yeah, um, no, I think I did do that right. So the di- if the Diamondbacks go 11 and 8 or better the rest of the month, Derek Montilla's hair will once again be purple. And the D-backs have a few more Apple TV broadcasts this year. So maybe we'll have multiple declarations that the fiend, that the mayor of the city of Phoenix has dyed his hair purple over the course of the season, which would of course be fantastic news for all of us. So I am on board, Derek. I I, I applaud you. There is something. I'm a man of my word. There is something Benjamin said that I, I wanted to touch on. Me and Jesse talked about it yesterday. So he was, he's saying they could afford that disastrous July last year because they were really good in April and May. And I, I brought it up to Jesse I feel like every time that I've seen the Diamondbacks make the playoffs, they've started hot. I can't think of a time where they where they started off poorly and they were able to come back and, mm. and figure it out. Mm. This team has had a lot going against them, but I do think it bears noting that typically they have hot starts when they have really good teams. Yeah, there sure. there is some truth to that. I mean, I think last year uh, I don't remember if it was I think it was seven and four was their record through eleven games. Uh, you go back to twenty seventeen. I don't have it in front of me, but they were good. Uh, there have been some years where they started well but did not make the playoffs, like 2018. I think they were eight and three out of the For gate. Sure. Um, but yeah, they, I mean the opposite. They're they're the the history of this franchise. They yeah, if they don't start well, they generally don't really go anywhere. But also the Diamondbacks have only made the playoffs a handful of times, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in in their entire franchise's history, and there's very little overlap between the 2024 Diamondbacks and like the 2011 team or the 2017 team. So make me dye my hair purple. I just, I don't really like, I don't really look at it that way because I mean, sure. You can make the case that the Diamondbacks were, were okay to slump in July because they were so good in April, but why couldn't it just be flipped this year? Yeah. Why couldn't, why couldn't we they make slump the, a little the, bit early and then get it, out of it? it also and doesn't work. Yeah, I was trying to tell Jacob yesterday that it doesn't really work like that. You can slump in both. There's nothing you, you can slump. In there's both, nothing that's, that's keeping you from slumping later in the season. If you slump early, yeah. what, what I go back to with that is the Diamondbacks offense, I believe is an above average offense Correct. for sure with, with Corbin Carroll, with Cattell Marte, with the depth that they have, I'm not saying it's impossible that it could be below average, but I think it's an above average offense. Well, especially with unplugging Corbin and Gabby and plugging them back in Once and they having regress them reset. Positively. Yeah, right. They're, they're, they seem to be getting back. And today. it's the same. And it's the same with the starting pitching. Yeah. Once you get Jordan Montgomery and Eduardo Rodriguez, I believe this is an above average starting rotation. And I mean, there are weird situations like we saw last year. The Padres have an outrageously positive run differential and miss the playoffs and only finish two games over 500. I don't want to say that. And that was good a super teams, team. That was kind of a super team. Yeah, I don't want to say that we good teams put can't like, you know, outscore their opponents by a bunch of runs and miss the playoffs. But generally speaking, if you are above average offensively and above average is starting pitching wise. Yeah. Granted, the bullpen, there are some questions there. It's hard for me to look at this team on paper and and not think that they're going to be a pretty good team. What what does that look like? Like, is that 82 wins or is that 94 wins? I mean, there's certainly a range of outcomes there, yeah. but I don't really view it as like, oh, I mean, they, you know, they could win five games in July again and also have won, you know, 11 games in the whole month of April. Like what exactly happened in that situation? I mean, what did all of these good players do to uh-huh. allow that outcome? It, it seems pretty unlikely to me. Uh, like Elise said here, the slump in July was also a severe slump. They went eight and sixteen. In yeah, July. I mean you're never gonna predict that to happen, to no matter. I'm gonna be honest though, yeah. that Padres comparison scares the shit out of me. It that really Padres does. Padres team, the dynamics there are, are are pretty different. I mean, this Diamondbacks team, they lost every game late though, and the Diamondbacks have started off this season losing every game late. Like that's 
that's the comparison that I'm looking at there. Yeah. And they had a stacked roster, and it, it they had but, a positive run yeah. differential like we have, and it just didn't work out. I, that's there's the thing, some though. similarities. You're, there yeah. is, but there, you're very much forgetting here that there's a key component missing, which is our closer. And it's not to say Kevin Ginkle isn't capable of that, and as Jesse has said before in the past, quite likely our closer of the future. But – there, there is a missing component here. It's not like it's like you, you have this great closer in there and he's blowing games and you're scratching your head as to what's going on. You, you can kind of trace a lot of the Diamondbacks' faults, their shortcomings right now to lack of personnel. Missing personnel 100%. in one way Definitely. or another, whether it's Definitely. the new arms they invested in. That's why I'm not Seawald, panicking. The, yeah, exactly. You, that's the reason why nobody should panic right now. And that's the reason why it's hard to compare this team and what they're going through right now to any – thing else because it's a lot it's due to health unless you're comparing it to other teams that were good but we're missing a lot of their key players then it's probably not a fair comparison to what's going on with the diamondbacks right now i do going back to the blaze alexander conversation real quick i know you brought him up at the beginning of the show no. that that is gonna i mean i do have questions about how the diamondbacks are going to handle that because while some of these guys could be back with this team fairly soon, I'm not sure that Geraldo Perdomo is going to be back in two, three weeks. Like it's, I mean, you get surgery, right? Uh, a torn meniscus. That's not a super easy thing to come back from. The timeline was four to six weeks there. It it, it appears. So what are, I mean, what are the Diamondbacks going to do with that position in the next month, month and a half, knowing that Blaze Alexander has, has really struggled and, we talked the other day about how he's a rookie. Rookies are going to make rookie mistakes, and maybe maybe he gets you know forty percent better in the matter of a week just by kind of getting his feet under him and yeah. being more comfortable under the bright lights and whatnot. But that's that is maybe my uh, maybe not my biggest question, but one of the biggest questions I think facing this team in the next month is how do you what do you do at shortstop? How do you make sure that? You're not giving away key outs night after night, having either Blaze or Kevin Newman, who doesn't have a good defensive reputation, or Jace Peterson, who's barely played that position professionally. They're in a pretty tough spot there. They are, and it'll be interesting because they have a lot of roster moves they have, have to make. And, I mean, it's it's going to be a puzzle they have to put together as far as their depth and, and what they do, I think. Yeah. Um, obviously, some guys – are not winning themselves much more playing time. That's for sure. In, in regards to what's going to happen once those roster moves get made, but I wonder what Elvis, what Elvis Andrews is up to. I guess yeah, at least at least had the exact same thought. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, I don't think Elvis Andrews agreed to like the minor league assignment. So as far as I'm aware, he's just sort of out there. I get and potentially looking for a job. I, I wonder if bringing him back would be a possibility. You're not expecting a ton of offense from, from Elvis Andrews at this point, but even just having someone who's really experienced a shortstop, I think would do a lot of good for this Diamondbacks team. So hey, Jesse, we'll, uh, we'll see who leads the league in outs above average at shortstop. Nick Ahmed leads the Nick league. Nick Ahmed outs leads average. the league in outs above average. <laughs> Stop. I don't want to talk about this guy anymore. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> yeah, let's look at let's look at his hitting stats. No, real quick. we're I, not going to no, we're no, not going to do, do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Why can't well, we talk about that? Because no, we're not. Because you know what I'd rather talk about? I'd rather talk about going to Circle K because I'm hungry <laughs> and it's late and I need beer for the ride home because I want to celebrate. I drank all of this one, so of course it's a great place to get Four Peaks and all of your favorite beers. Circle K is a great place to get yourself snacks. It's also a great place to fill up for gas. If you haven't joined their Inner Circle program. You have not been listening to this program. Obviously, you should do so for right now for free by downloading the Inner Circle K, uh, the, the Inner Circle app right now. Uh, terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. You'll save 25 cents off per gallon on your first five Phillips. That's 25 cents off per gallon on your first five Phillips. That's a lot of money to save, uh, especially with how expensive gas is right now. So make sure to stop in and do that. You'll also save three cents per gallon every day after that. And you'll get all sorts of wonderful uh, new coupons in the Circle K app, free stuff all the time. So make and when, sure to when you up. become a premium member, you save five cents, right? That's right. You save five cents. You know cents what I found member? out this what's, week? What's that? Bo Brock just became a premium member. I was like, brother, what have you we've been, been in for? the we've been in the club wow. for a minute here. Yeah, I mean, since 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 day one. Like how? we the ones, he's the twos, I guess. Yeah, huh? I mean, oh yeah. oh, nice. Welcome to the show, dude. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> do you not even pay attention to your own ad reads? What are you doing, Bo? Uh, anyway, save he's some money. Paying, he's paying too much attention to the Baltimore Orioles farm system. That's he correct. Have any time That's for correct. All right, it's a busy shout out Jackson Holiday. I don't Congrats. want to shout out Jackson Holiday. I do not want to do that. But 
of course, uh, I do want to shout out Arizona Lottery because right now uh, there's a lot of money floating around out there. And of course, Arizona Lottery is also about getting you out there to see this beautiful state on some of their Arizona adventures. Uh, there are three ways to play this new promotion. Of course, they have their Arizona Adventure lottery tickets featuring three iconic landscapes. You can also check in at geolocated adventures at 10 destinations across the state. Jesse will take his sick RAV4 to all of those destinations from Flagstaff to Yuma. Uh, of course, you can also check in uh, at destination coordinates on the website or enter tickets online for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Arizona Lottery says proceeds from ticket sales supports environmental conservation, among other important initiatives across the state. Arizona Lottery, not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com. For more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Well, before we go, we have a huge controversy that Jesse and I have been arguing about all day. Uh, <laughs> I absolutely hate this man, and I can't believe his take on this. But uh, let's see if, uh, oh, Josh Hunt says, came here to say Derek should be wearing a Speedo to the pool if the, they have a winning record. <laughs> Nobody wants to see no, that. No, no. I feel like we all lose if that happens. Purple right? hair in a Speedo, you'll literally look like an old-style pro wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> that would go kind of crazy. Uh, no Can I wear a lucha no. mask? No. Maybe no, some boots. out the top. All right. Uh, we, this tweet came out. Uh, let's take a look at the tweet. Do you have the tweet, Damon? No, I mean no. people. People probably know what you we're probably talking know the about. tweet. It's yeah. from Arash Markazi from the he covers the Dodgers, covers all sorts of things, including pro wrestling from time to time. Uh, but he took a picture of 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 some nuts, and not the ones that got uh. that station in Mexico in trouble for the solar stuff. These nuts right here. Uh, Arash says the Arizona Diamondbacks won the National League and played in the World Series last season, but at a grocery store. A block from Chase Field, they sell Dodgers and Giants peanuts in addition to Diamondbacks peanuts. The manager, he's doing some hes doing some good investigative work here. The manager said the Dodgers peanuts have been the best selling. Mm. Wow, that holds so much <laughs> weight. Guys, our, <laughs> our fandom is broken, apparently. Well, if the manager said if so. If the manager said so, he has to be right. Okay, first of all. This is where me and him dis disagree on this. I think I agree with you more than I maybe wanted to. Yeah, I get it. I think I've warmed up it's to your hard perspective not to. a little bit. Well, because, okay, we live in a state that has spring training, right? So there's an obvious connection there that most likely if you so go. These were, these were sold at the ballpark? No. Okay. No. Okay. Then these, I stand I stand by my position. These I are think sold, you're dead wrong, Derek. These are sold at Fry's downtown across the street from the Footprint Center. That is the local grocery store that he's referring to, making it sound like a little mom and pop shop. Yeah, it's, it's not a, that. Yeah. It's a Kroger's. It's a Kroger's, it's a Kroger's national store. brand. They're in 35 states across the nation. Okay. And they go by a bunch of different names. They do. They For do. Some, some call themselves reason. Kroger, which is real. Yeah. Real, real, real weird to us. But anyway. Vons um, yeah. or uh, King Supers That's in right. Colorado. Yeah. Uh, the, the I, point, I could do this all day, the, Derek. The point being is. <laughs> Food Lion. They, 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 yeah, he, he's, he's trying to take a shot here at, uh, I think, Diamondbacks fans or the Diamondbacks or the culture here or this fries. I don't know who he's mad at um, for selling peanuts with other teams logos on them which is just fucking crazy jesse look if there are peanuts being sold with any team they're going to they're going to push them to the ballparks uh or to the fries closest to the ballpark right we are in a city where there are 15 spring training teams here including the giants including the dodgers that most likely stock giants and dodgers fan apparel and such at the stores that are close to those stadiums by Camelback Ranch, by the one in Scottsdale. And thus, there's going to be products that don't necessarily have the Diamondbacks logo just here in town. Forget the fact that it's a national brand and they might just ship different teams to different areas thinking that, oh, hey, there's other fans in that state, right? Like it's, I, and, and even Dodgers fans in the comments are saying, where you go to the ones in LA, there's angels ones and there's giants ones and stuff like this isn't an exclusive thing to this one fries in downtown Phoenix, even though he wants to kind of make it out to be that. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I guess my my question, like, do you think that these were these were not leftover items? Like, it, it's not like, oh, it's Scottsdale Stadium. They had How some extra. They had some extra. I, I'm that? asking. I'm asking. I, I, I have no way to know that. Peanuts seem like the kind of thing that last a long time. I don't know. Like, I feel like so, they have a long shelf life. Am so I wrong? If if these were items that simply went unsold at at you know giant spring training games dodger spring training games i guess i get it like sure throw them in the local in the local supermarket and you know maybe i guess they're going to expire or whatever see if you can sell them that would be somewhat acceptable to me however i do think that kroger is in the interest of making money and selling things that they think will sell and will make them money right and they have determined that it is in their best interest to stock not only Diamondbacks, Peanuts, but also San Francisco Giants and Los Angeles Dodgers. And I simply think that that is indicative of the sports market that Phoenix is at large. This is not <laughs> something crazy. this is not something <laughs> that we crazy. only see at Kroger, Derek. How many times do you see Dodgers apparel, uh, Giants apparel, Yankees apparel? If you go to basically any apparel store, uh, outside of the ones that are like super local, that are like really dialed in on just Arizona sports, you see Dodgers stuff, you see stuff from other teams all over the place in, yeah. in Arizona. It's because, yes, it's a good business idea, considering that there are going to be opposing fans of these teams also going to these baseball games. But this is not anything about the Phoenix market. This is what Kroger does in every market. They are going to put teams that come regularly to that city right. also out. So right. it's not and, something and they know they know that if they sell Dodgers products and Giants products in their grocery store, they're going to sell people more. will buy them. They're going to buy them. And that's that's all I'm saying is that what is all you're saying that there are opposing fans that attend baseball games here in Arizona? I'm just saying like that, there are in every other fucking state. No, but it's different in Arizona. It's different in Arizona. Of that's it why is. that's why of there's it is. That's why when, the, that. when the Dodgers are in town, I'm not I'm this isn't like any kind of breaking news when the Dodgers are in town, when the Giants are in town. Those teams have have a lot of impact in this market. It's because those teams have been around for a very long time. Their spring training games have been played here for a long time. Yeah. There's a lot of transplants. I, I don't dispute that. If you threw that. fucking I don't Cubs that. peanuts out there, they would probably sell they would. too. And that yeah. also makes my point. It yes. doesn't really make your point. <laughs> it it's, it's, like, it's like you're shaming them, but it's a national company that has no local ties here. So they have no, le they have no loyalty to only sell Diamondbacks products. This isn't in the stadium this isn't the guy on the fucking corner trying to double dip and be also like i got Do i got dodgers ones too no this is fries which is part of kroger's which is a national brand that has stores in 35 fucking states they're gonna do whatever makes them money but this is nothing to do with the arizona sports market and has everything to do with this being a national company and him making a big deal over a national company having a store here and selling fucking peanuts for more than one baseball team. But if you go into Dick's, guess what? They don't just sell Diamondbacks gear at Dick's. If you go into Champs or whatever still exists, if there's any malls that still exist, they're going to sell other teams gear too. It's the way it works. You just can't get all up in fucking arms. When I was a kid, I used to buy other teams gear just because I liked those players. I didn't really have that kind of loyalty. I just wanted like the players gear of teams I liked and players I like. This whole thing is crazy to me to make a big deal out of it, and I feel like it's trying to shame Diamondbacks fans for not being good enough fans is what I feel. No, like. I, it is. It is. It is. Derek, it absolutely is. Derek, where were you? Like, they what? want you to be up in arms about I mean, it and, is, like, go down there they, and burn this fucking fries is, is to the ground. Is they, like, the person who sent this tweet? Are we yeah, talking about Arash Markazi? he's a Dodgers reporter. Yeah, sure. Like, I don't really think – I think he – yeah, clearly has ill intent here. Like he's trying to make a point about Diamondbacks fans that I don't necessarily agree with. Um, but at the same time, I I think it's telling that there's a lot of places in this in this city, in this state, where you will find a lot of apparel, a lot of items tied to other teams, and that is this not is, as normal in other places as it is in Arizona. It's the same That's thing all with I'm the, saying. It's the same thing as the versus dog. It's the same thing as a versus dog. Yeah. You, you sound as up in arms as people about the versus dog, right? When 
that's catering to the opposing fans. I don't and really people find that to be fucking crazy when a lot of people have come to terms with the fact that without opposing fans, that stadium would be empty a lot of times. Right. And and that you also know? makes my point. You're it doing does. a better job making my I'm point than I am, making, Derek. I mean, Jesse, it's not. <laughs> it's it's something that's a fact. This city had spring training long before it had the Diamondbacks. It had yeah. teams that were affiliated with the Giants here long before the Diamondbacks ever existed and that we were fans of. And thus, when you're a fan of that, you're a fan of the organization and you just become a fan. Like, it's hard to break those ties when generations of your family have rooted for a team and now you're supposed to just root for a different team. Luckily, people are choosing to do that, choosing to root for the Diamondbacks. The younger fans, some of you great ass fan, you amazing people in our chat that are young people that have been rooting for this team your whole lives. God bless you. Thank you. You are the reason why this is going to change for us eventually. But it takes time because people hold their allegiances to teams that have existed for 100 years and not one that's sure, been around sure. for 20. Yeah. Right. And that's the way There's that it is. That, you sure. know, but it's also the fact that we're a big transplant city. We have a lot of different team love here. And again, these national companies, especially, they don't give a shit about loyalty to the local market. They're going to do whatever makes them money at the end of the day. And that's the reason why this is more of an indictment of Kroger's, you know, being just kind of slutty with their peanut selection than it is about Diamondbacks <laughs> fans feeling shame for their team. Like, oh, hey, we have opposing fans here. We are always going to have opposing fans here. And that's the yeah, way it is. Yeah, I, I acknowledge the last thing I'll say. I acknowledge where you're coming from and the case you're making for why it is the way it is. Like, it's not all that hard to explain why this is the case. But it is the case yeah. that there are, there are a lot of fans of other teams here. And just as a general sports fan growing up, you know, rooting for the Arizona sports teams when I was a kid, that's something that I never liked. Yeah, I, oh I, yeah, and, I, and I it's never me. and I would never be on board with any sports town like openly embracing its rival teams sure. within that market. Sure. And that's fair, too. That's fair, too. Um, but again, uh, this guy, I just, just like know, Greg Morgan, he's a known troublemaker. I, I will never forget where I was when the Dodgers won the Peanuts World Series. I will never forget it. That it is, is, that it's, is huge. It's really the only thing that matters. That there. is huge yeah. for them. Peanut I mean, sales is really the way. A Mickey Mouse I mean, forget championship rain, right? and now Peanuts sold baseball club. <laughs> Those are two insane moments for Dodgers fans <laughs> everywhere. And and I'm really – I got to put – yeah. Tip of the cap to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, Elise <laughs> is right. If they were best selling, why didn't Fresh charge more for the winning label? Missed opportunity. She's not wrong. All right. And she's <laughs> never wrong because she's a known baseball GM. Everyone should listen to her. Uh, but we do appreciate you guys stopping here to also listen to us. We know most of you come here to listen to Elise, but we appreciate you stopping by. Of course, <laughs> uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at cap underscore K man with a K. Jesse is at Jesse and Friedman. Of course, the people's producer Damon is at Damon dog. That's D A W G. We are Damon's dogs. Bark, bark. Our show is at PHNX underscore d but of course all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys so much for stopping by. Make sure to drop a like before you leave. We always appreciate you doing that. Drop a like for Gabby. He deserves it more than we do. Of course, uh, you guys have yourselves a wonderful night. We will be back tomorrow with another post-game show after tomorrow's finale of this series with the Rockies. So join us then. In the meantime, have, a, have yourselves a wonderful night. And remember, kids, baseball is fun. But damn it, it's so much more fun when Tori gets win number 500. Let's go. We all silly like the mayor. 